Welcome to Think Tech. Welcome to Community Matters here on Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. We're talking today about the FBI. Uh, what does the FBI do for the community? And and that and the word community is sort of a larger community than you might have thought. Um, and we have on the show the SAC, the special agent in charge, uh, Stephen Merrill for Hawaii. And we have Vicky Caetano, uh, who is interested in what the FBI does. Hi, Vicky. Hi, Stephen. Thank you for joining us. Aloha. Hi, and happy new year. Thank you. So, um, Stephen, it's really a treat to meet somebody in the FBI because we, we see so much about the FBI in the media. All our, all our lives, you know, we've been seeing and reading and hearing about what you do, all those very, very, very interesting things. And I don't think anybody will disagree. The, the FBI is the premier law enforcement, law investigation uh, organization in the federal government, and thus in the country. Uh, and that we rely on you for public safety and many, many other things. So can you give me a little definition of what it's like to be the SAC here in Hawaii? Well, thank you for your question. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to join you. And being the special agent in charge in Hawaii is a lifelong dream of mine. Uh, and uh, I just can't be happier to be here. Uh, my day is always interesting, like it has been my entire career in the FBI. Uh, but I really uh, enjoy most getting to see what all our employees do every day. Uh, you know, some of it gets into the media and through court filings and that sort of thing. And I'm really glad to promote that. But the majority of things that go on in the FBI offices around the world uh, go under the radar and unnoticed. But I get to see it firsthand. And I'm just so proud of the men and women in the FBI who work every day, uh, you know, from every job title. And we have so many I'd be happy to talk about. Uh, to protect the American people, uh, uphold the Constitution. It, uh, it really is a great um, responsibility, but something that I enjoy and, and has my, my, made my career incredibly fulfilling, uh, helping me sleep at night, uh, every night, just like all our employees do, knowing that we're doing good, supporting the American people and protecting them. Stephen, I won't, I won't ask you how I get your job, because I think <laughs> that, would, that would take too long here on the show. But I will ask you how I can uh, sign up for the FBI, uh, how Vicky and me can present ourselves in Quantico and become FBI agents and maybe come back to Hawaii as part of your group. <laughs> well, we'd love to have you. Uh, the FBI, again, we have a number of jobs, including special agent. Uh, we have uh, so many different jobs. But to be a special agent, uh, I hate to break the news to you. Uh, you have to be. We only hire people between the ages of 23 and 37. And uh, you have to have a college degree. Other than that, uh, we're, we're open and we're, we're always hiring. The FBI uh, puts so many agents through the FBI Academy in Quantico, Virginia every year, this year being no exception. Uh, and uh, it's a relatively short career because we have to retire by the time we're 57. Uh, so there's always an influx and outflow of FBI special agents. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, the FBI is hiring and we'd love to hire locally here in Hawaii and Guam and Saipan uh, so that our agent cadre looks like the community that we serve here. Mm -hmm. So, Vicki, it looks like you would qualify. I'm not so sure I would. I <laughs> <that's> just, uh... <laughs> but I would like to just say how important this organization is, not just to us as a state nationally, but global security. And the things that the FBI does, I mean, you know, one of my favorite shows is that FBI. I spend three hours watching every single one of the series, but it's more than drama, mystery, espionage. It's about the security of our country. And I think that too often as a citizen, we take it for granted that we live in this great place. And there are people like the FBI who protect us in order to make sure that we have the security. And cybersecurity is definitely something that when special agent in charge, Stephen Merrill, talked about, uh, you know, we all talk about computers, we take it for granted. But then when you talk about cybersecurity, I think the public at large needs to understand that and also more about the role of how, what the FBI does and how we as a community can be more proactive in supporting you to protect our, our place here. Well, if the well, viewer wants to know what the FBI does, I have a place to go. And that is uh, the FBI website, which is FBI.gov, which I looked at today and I was, I was really delighted to see the quality of this website. Uh, it's got everything. It tells everything that the FBI does, or at least in public. It tells all the services it renders to 
uh, victims, witnesses, tipsters. You, there it is. There's the website. And Stephen, I, I know it's a national website, but it's terrific. And uh, I, I, I commend the FBI on putting that together. Any thoughts about the website? Is it working? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you asked. And thank you, Vicki, for your kind words. Um, you know, the FBI website is, uh, it enables a number of things to happen. One is that you can look at the FBI in general, find our job postings, our availability, where we have offices. Uh, and that's so important because uh, using us as an example here in Honolulu, we rely on the public for tips to initiate cases, whether they be criminal or national security. So you can go on that website, you can uh, make uh, submit tips, make complaints. You can look at our ic3.gov website, which has information about fraud schemes and, and other uh, white collar frauds. Uh, and then, um, you know, referring back to Vicky's comments about the cyber, uh, this is where it really goes to show that investigations and cyber investigations, as an example, are a team sport because uh, we want to work with our partners, uh, our other federal partners, Homeland Security, Secret Service, our state and local uh, law enforcement partners to help educate the public about cyber uh, crime, as well as uh, investigate it and hopefully put those responsible behind bars. But it is truly a team sport and we rely on the public to safeguard their systems, uh, to keep track of uh, all the updated patches and implement them into their systems. And when, God forbid, they are uh, you know, uh, penetrated by a criminal element or, or otherwise, they can notify the FBI, we can work with them, we can work with companies uh, to help develop plans for their cybersecurity so that when there is a, an intrusion, uh, we can work together to try to backtrack and find out who is responsible and work with our prosecutors at the U.S. Attorney's Office uh, to hopefully put people in prison for uh, defrauding and uh, you know, penetrating uh, very sensitive sometimes criminal, uh, I'm sorry, um, cyber networks. Yeah, I'll volunteer for the grand jury and I'll volunteer for the petty jury as well. I'll be involved in that. Uh, so you guys were together at a conference not too long ago about cybersecurity. Vicki, can you talk about the conference? Well, you know, one of the things that impressed me as they were talking, various members of this team, is not just about the cybersecurity, but the expanded work that they do in our community. And I don't know about many of our listeners, viewers, but for me, it was really impressive talking about, for example, safe online surfing. You know, we're taking action to prevent crimes against children, uh, the ransomware uh, literature that you had, teen and youth academies. Uh, everything to permeate community so that we can all be part of this really purposeful, you know, mission to safeguard our families, our community, uh, community outreach programs. So I'd really encourage all of our viewers to get on that website uh, and look about how we can all play a role. We don't have to be employed, but we can all, as citizens of this place that we love, really play an important role in the security and safety of our families. Absolutely. You know, to us, Stephen, um, you are the rule of law. That's what you are. And we appreciate everything you do. And it's, it's so many things you do. You can spend a long time on that website and, and see so many things, dozens and dozens of functions you perform. Well, thanks. Yeah. And to, to that point, I encourage people to go on the FBI website and you can even find the Honolulu uh, subpage of that. But uh, to highlight uh, Vicky's comments, we have a number of initiatives where we do get out in the public and uh, conduct a lot of community outreach because, again, we're part of this community too. We go to the same schools. We have kids in the same schools. We shop at the same grocery stores. Uh, and some of those initiatives are actually coming up here in Honolulu where we host a Citizens Academy every year. Uh, where we bring in the public uh, to learn about the FBI and what we do and sort of the engagements that we have with the public. And uh, that course is an eight-week class, and it's once a week every eight weeks. And each week we look at a different part of what the FBI does. Uh, and it's a tr tremendously rewarding program for us because we get to meet the public. And uh, th those people end up being the best advocates we have for the FBI that are in the communities explaining uh, what we do uh, so it's uh, you know, more transparent to the public about the value we're playing in our communities across the country. Yeah, and a part of that, I think, is to evoke action by people. You know, they, they've been saying for a long time, they've been saying, do something, participate in your community, participate in, you know, in keeping it safe and healthy and, and prosperous and all that. And 
Uh, I think what you're talking about in large part is, is to uh, e elicit that, that kind of attitude among, among people in general. Am I right? I agree, uh, Jay. And there's about 13,000 FBI agents around the world, and we can't be everywhere at once, but we're asked to do more and more every year, uh, and we take on that responsibility. But we rely on the public to be the eyes and ears uh, and let us know when things uh, look bad and smell bad so we can take a look. And if uh, you know it's authorized, we'll open an investigation. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's, it really is a team game. Uh, we rely on the public, we rely on our partners, and uh, together we can all make our communities much safer. You know, uh, Vicki mentioned uh, that she watched, has watched the FBI program on TV. Um, and uh, there have been many, many programs and movies on TV, uh, lots of media over the years. Um, you know, you guys, since your very origins 100 years ago, have, um, you know, sparked the imagination of the public and the country and the cases you've handled and so forth. Uh, but I wonder if there's any myths out there uh, that maybe maybe not so accurate, uh, maybe myths that you may want to dispel. Can you think of any? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, that in these TV shows, whether it be about the FBI or any law enforcement agency, that the cases get solved within 60 minutes. And uh, I hope that's the case. Uh, I would be very happy if our, our agents here in Honolulu came back every day with a, a success story. But uh, a lot of the things we do take a long time. And uh, as an example, as a as a young agent in the FBI. I worked on a case called the Unibomb case, uh, which was a, a nationwide bombing spree that lasted over 20 years. So I was lucky enough to spend the last three years of the case uh, on the case uh, versus some of my counterparts that came before me spent, you know, even 10 years on the same case and never saw the case come to trial uh, or resolution. So uh, I think the speed by which cases uh, come are uh, are different in each instance, but uh, I wish they could all be done in 60 minutes. That case is on your uh, in your website. Uh, you have some famous cases where you describe, you know, the efforts and ultimate success of the FBI and the Department of Justice in these really high profile cases. You also have the 10 top fugitives, which I find very interesting. Uh, and, uh, and I suppose it's worthwhile to look at that because you never know whether the fellow sitting next to you is uh, happens to be a fugitive. That's right. In fact, uh, we had a success story uh, just, I think it was about 10 days ago, a San Diego FBI investigation that was on the top 10 list that we were looking for someone. Uh, we ended up apprehending them. They were overseas working with our uh, partners uh, internationally, uh, and we brought uh, or bringing them back, if that hasn't happened already, back to the mainland to uh, go before a judge. And uh, that's the brilliance of another example of that website where, yeah, the public can look at our top 10 list and you know, there's people out there. The reason we post that because there's people out there that have seen those people and, and met them before. So, uh, again, we can't thank the public enough for their participation and going the extra mile to help make their community safer by spending time on that website and uh, providing tips when they can. Vicki, you were going to say something? Yeah, I was going to say that that's what I hope that having you on today will help us do. The three A's, awareness you know, and an action commitment to assisting you folks for our community. But with that said, while we all share similar concerns, no matter it's New York, Chicago, Hawaii, is there something or some things here in Hawaii you feel that we need to be more cognizant of or more concerned about that we're not perhaps paying enough attention to? You know, I, th I think um, in Hawaii, we're pretty evenly balanced as an FBI office in between national security and criminal cases. And I think the public is, is well aware of the uh, criminal cases. And, uh, you know, we've had a number of successes investigatively over the past couple of years dealing with corruption and uh, why we take special pride in that and make it a priority in this office, because really the FBI, while we do partner with uh, our partner agencies on many different things, that's really the one thing that we do on our own. We have the sort of sole authority for that. So um, I think that is uh, you know, evidenced by the number of cases we've had successfully over the past few years. It makes me worry that there's more cases that we're not aware of. So I, I think we, we could certainly use the public's help. The way I look at public corruption and, and fraud in general is that this is my money. I'm a taxpayer, just like everybody else. And I do not want to see my tax money being used for anything other than uh, you know, providing value to everybody here in our state. Uh, and so uh, to your question, 
um, Vicky, I asked that the public you know, take a special note that corruption is unacceptable here and, and help law enforcement to identify those people that are defrauding us and uh, defrauding the taxpayers and using that money improperly. And also the second part of that, uh, we talked about it already briefly, but cyber attacks, uh, those are uh, certainly on a rise. And I encourage everybody to uh, look at ways to protect your systems, whether you be one person or work for a company, uh, because I can guarantee you uh, there's a host of at cyber adversaries that are out there that are trying to uh, penetrate your systems. You know, part of this is about public confidence, too. Confidence that if I call you, you'll answer me. If I give you a tip, you'll take it serious. Uh, it, you know, it won't just go in the file. Um, and uh, you will actually protect me, and you will root out corruption, and you will make my government um, something I can be proud of, I can be confident about. Uh, public confidence is really central in a democracy, and you are central, in my view, in public confidence, right? You know, you've given me a great opportunity in our office, an opportunity to, you know, talk about the FBI, which I'm always proud to do. Uh, and that really is part of our strategy here in the Honolulu FBI, is that we're able to conduct investigations uh, to the extent possibly, uh, extent possible, be transparent about them, uh, talk about our successes, and that hopefully will create this pinwheel effect where the public confidence increases, we get more people applying to the FBI and other uh, law enforcement agencies, uh, and we get someone long after I've retired from the FBI, someone who's listening to this podcast or a newscast I'm on uh, you know, in 20 years becomes a, a new FBI employee and does the same thing that I'm able to do, which is spend a career, a very re rewarding career, fighting crime. And uh, that really is uh, where we're at now. And I'm so proud of the fact that I'm able to talk about our successes because I think that does breed confidence uh, the community has in the FBI. And it's something we try very hard to earn every day. And we do it through our work, put our head down. And uh, hopefully some of these successes uh, will cause, uh, again, a young boy or girl out there to think that this is a career I want to have uh, when I uh, graduate from college. Vicki, I get an emotional reaction when he talks like that. How about you? I do, and I'm so proud of what you folks do and so honored that you're on today. But my only wish would be that we'd have the same level of confidence at the state and county level. You know, it's when I talk to friends, they're like, well, wait till the feds get them. Then it'll be then it's real business. That's really pitiful. So what at the state and county? It's funny business. You know, why? Do, why is it that we have to rely only when the the national guys, the FBI get involved, Department of Justice, that we know that justice will then prevail, especially when we talk about corruption. So thank you for doing that. And I hope that leaders at the state and county level will start to say, we can do this just as they do it. Yeah, I have to say, Vicki, uh, you know, we work very closely with our state and local counterparts all throughout the, isle of the islands here, the four counties. Um, a lot of things we do, we can't do without our local and, and county counterparts, usually on the criminal side. Uh, but yeah, there are some things that the FBI has sole jurisdiction in, uh, but we're grateful uh, for our task forces, like our Joint Terrorism Task Force, which really encompasses every group uh, law enforcement uh, agency here in our AOR, our, our area of responsibility. Uh, and I really thank the chiefs and other federal head uh, heads of department uh, that provide resources for us to make sure that this uh, state remains safe. You know, one of the things we've touched on is uh, your international operations. Uh, there was a time, uh, I give away my age, uh, when we saw the FBI as strictly national. Uh, but right. over time, it has become international. Can you describe that? Yeah, the FBI has offices in U.S. embassies and consulates, uh, and I think over 80 countries now. Uh, and I was lucky enough, uh, very privileged to have served in two U.S. embassies for long-term assignments totaling over six years, representing the FBI and U.S. law enforcement to our partners overseas. And what that really means is uh, most people, uh, like you said, know that we're a domestic uh, law enforcement agency. We don't have U.S. law enforcement authority. We don't have that authority overseas, nor do uh, our foreign partners have authority here in the U.S. So in many ways, you're half diplomat, half police officer. Uh, and in that role, the FBI employees overseas are working with our partners in, in other countries 
to get work done. Like I mentioned that case where we identified a top 10 fugitive overseas, the FBI would rely on that host country to make the arrest, uh, to process them through their court system, and hopefully through the diplomatic extradition or deportation process, uh, hand them over to FBI agents or other um, US marshals, other law enforcement, where we can take them back so that they see justice before a US judge uh, and the charges that we make here. So. Um, a lot of the partnerships, because all the crimes that we investigate in many ways are international, uh, are just absolutely integral. And uh, you know, when I was overseas, I had a number of uh, cases. As an example, um, there was a, uh, a U.S. person that was overseas that was committing crimes against children, uh, very violent crimes. And uh, I was able to work with the authorities in that country to arrest the person, and I transported them back to the United States. And they were before a judge, uh, you know, 24 hours later. So it's a huge part of what we do, whether it be cybercrime, terrorism, or, or even, uh, you know, white collar fraud. A lot of the subjects and victims we have are uh, dispersed all over the world. And uh, with our network uh, of law enforcement contacts, we're able to uh, make the world a smaller place and, and work cases jointly with our partners uh, around the world. Well, sure, it's a flat world, isn't it? How could you not? Uh, you know, the fact is that so many... Uh, actors, whether they be individuals or state actors around the world, uh, uh, work against us. Um, and you can't just stay at home and not look out o over the ocean and, and see issues and actors that you have to deal with. So it seems to me that the move to go international is absolutely necessary and will become all the, all the more the case in years to come. Don't you agree? I agree. Yeah. Um, so Marie I go ahead, Vicki. You know, where you don't get cooperation, does the FBI have a, a, a ability to get go take it to another level or does it simply have to stop right there? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, not every country is equal and we have closer partnerships and historical partnerships in certain countries that we don't have with all of them. Uh, we are aided as a community in law enforcement internationally by the network uh, known as Interpol, which is based in Lyon, France. Uh, and uh, I think there's 185, uh, I might be wrong about the number, but the majority of countries are Interpol countries. So we can make requests uh, through that system uh, and get things done that way. But I, again, like I'm just so proud of the men and women of the FBI and uh, that are overseas, sometimes in very difficult places where the relationships aren't that good. Uh, but, uh, you know, by doing the right work the right way, uh, we've proven our, uh, you know, we've given those partners uh, and even in a harder, uh, you know, relationship to work in. We've given those partners confidence in the FBI's ability to get things done. And it's reciprocal. We do things for them uh, to achieve uh, both of our missions. So um, usually the system works pretty well. And even though uh, the U.S. may not have great relationships with certain countries, at a policeman to policeman or policewoman to policewoman relationship, uh, we were able to get the job done. I'd like to talk a little about espionage. We touched on that already. Uh, years ago, um, I, I was about to sit on a federal jury um, over the charge uh, of uh, espionage on the stealth bomber here. Wow. That case was here. That was tried here. Uh, Department of Justice uh, you know, provided prosecutors and they tried the case to a conviction and a sentence right here. Um, and of course, the FBI was heavily involved in investigating that right here. So I thought that was very interesting. We have our share of international crime international espionage right here, don't we? We certainly do. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, you know, here in Hawaii, uh, there are an incredible number of uh, U.S. government uh, facilities, personnel, and I can guarantee our adversaries are trying to collect the information, uh, whether it be records or, you know, uh, information, what people know out of their heads. Uh, and that is our job to help protect that. And we do that with our partners using the Department of Defense as an example. Uh, we have uh, teams of people that work very closely to make sure that uh, the assets that we have here in this state are being protected because yes, you're absolutely right. Our adversaries would like nothing more than to get our secrets uh, and uh, it's our job to protect that. And we work very hard at it. You know, just um, earlier, uh, we had a movie review of a series on uh, Netflix called The Americans. The Americans was a, a serial on cable between, I think, 2013, 2018, right in there somewhere. Um, and it dealt with a, a KGB couple 
that existed uh, outside the Beltway in Virginia uh, in the years uh, 1983 to 1986 or so. Uh, very powerful series, get interesting reviews on it. Um, and it involved a, a couple that were not really a couple that were sort of put together in a husband-wife partnership in Russia and, um, and assigned to be uh, KGB agents in the United States and to do espionage and to do assassination and other violence. It's a very interesting um, series. Um, and uh, I know it, it's fictitious, uh, fictional, um, but it, it really showed you a lot of things about how this all works. And I wonder if we have seen and the FBI has investigated other cases. Um, you know, there have been discussions about cases like that have been resulted in arrests right here in Hawaii uh, involving embedded uh, couples, families and the like that are really KGB agents. Uh, can you talk about it? Yeah, I mean, uh, to the extent I can talk about it, uh, I, I believe that show is based on, uh, you know, based on an FBI investigation that occurred at that time you mentioned. Uh, and that is certainly something historically we've, we've always done, uh, especially uh, during the Cold War. Uh, that was, uh, you know, it's a big part of the FBI. It always will be. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think the best place to start for that would be uh, if you've ever been to Washington, D.C., going to the, the Spy Museum, which is located very close to FBI headquarters uh, on the mall in Washington, um, there's just an incredible array of, uh, you know, spy gear, if you will, uh, that was, uh, you know, uncovered and now is housed in that museum. And I think that'd be a great place to learn about the history of those sort of investigations uh, that are, in many ways, the truth is probably stranger than fiction, uh, although the show, uh, you know, portrays things uh, in a certain way. But uh, yeah, there's a, a large history on that. And it's something that the FBI takes very seriously. Well, that's the thing that people don't realize. You know, they see so much fictional stuff and they say, oh, well, it's fiction. It's not really happening. But what, what I got out of that and what I am getting out of this is that it, it really does happen. And we live in a world where espionage is, is, um, is happening. Uh, and we, we must be aware of that. It's, it's not just leave it to beaver. Uh, it's real serious uh, in terms of you know, information and undermining our government and the like. And uh, we, we need you to do that. We want you to do that. And we have to be mindful of the fact the threat exists and you are doing that. Yeah, I think for some of our agents, the hardest part of the job uh, is that they can't talk about what they do. Uh, and uh, a lot of agents, uh, you know, who all take this very seriously, uh, will work an entire career. And uh, even, you know, sometimes the SAC might not be fully aware of the extent of uh, what's going on. And, and that's part of the excitement uh, of being an FBI employee and getting to see it firsthand. And that's something the public uh, may never get to see, uh, but uh, it's something, again, we take very seriously and uh, we're very proud of our work. So I wanted to, I wanted to also, before we close, I wanted to just get the, um, call it the universe in which the FBI lives. Um, so you work closely with the Department of Justice. Uh, we know that from the newspapers. Um, you, you work with Homeland Security. Uh, you work with uh, other security organizations. Um, but what, what what is your... What, what are your relationships within the government in terms of other agencies? Yeah, it's, it's especially heightened here in Hawaii because we don't have the cavalry coming. We don't have another office uh, in the FBI that you can drive to. We have 56 field offices. Uh, we're one of the few ones, or maybe the only one, oh no, uh, San Juan, where uh, you, the only way to get there is to fly. So what we do is we rely tremendously on our partnerships. Uh, and just to explain the U.S. Attorney's Office and the Department of Justice, how you know, we're part of the Department of Justice. Uh, we do the investigation in FBI cases and the Department of Justice, our local U.S. Attorney's Office, prosecutes those cases. Uh, and in terms of our federal partners, uh, whether it be Department of Defense, like I mentioned, or Homeland Security, like you mentioned, the DEA, uh, ATF, Secret Service, uh, there's just so many that we partner on because, yeah, we're a team here. Uh, and we have to be, but we're also, we really enjoy working together. And uh, we're a force multiplier when we're together. All of the different agencies have somewhat different authorities. And, uh, you know, when we work together, we're super strong uh, because, uh, you know, whether it be Postal Inspection Service or IRS, uh, you know, we can, uh, you know, work together to make 
uh, team effort. And again, the, the best example of that is our Joint Terrorism Task Force, which every agency bands together to ensure uh, to the extent we can that uh, this state is protected from terrorist activities. Uh, and uh, you know, that's one of the things, yes, that keeps us up at night. But again, uh, you know, the successes we've had have just been because we work as a team, uh, whether it be state, local, or other federal agencies. Now, years ago, there were issues about uh, different federal agencies, intelligence and law enforcement agencies working in silos, not sharing information, uh, yep. which resulted in, in, in problems with certain cases. Uh, it sounds to me like you have overcome that and that you are transparent between agencies and you do share. It's something we work very hard at and, I, and we can always make improvements. But yeah, the, you know, one of the lessons uh, coming off of 9-11 was that we were not sharing enough. And uh, that was a very hard lesson uh, for our country. And uh, you know, we, we, we made changes and I'm very proud as the SAC to know uh, that I have great partnerships with all of, my, uh, all of our other agencies and myself uh, or the lowest ranking person in our office can get on the phone uh, and our partners will pick up the phone just like uh, we will for them at a moment's notice and get things done for the American people. Mickey, we're almost out of time and I wanted to ask you if you had any other questions or mm, what do you call summary comments you'd like to make? No, I just wanted to ask and not assume, but I, I would assume that there are strong relationships also with the military, given the sensitive and important role that they play in our security as well. No, you're absolutely right, Vicki. Uh, we have great relationships uh, with the Department of Defense, uh, and a lot of them have investigative arms that are not as big as the FBI, but uh, you know, just as important, uh, you know, investigative uh, parts of di the different agencies. So, yeah, we work very closely because uh, our mission, in addition to criminal investigations, is uh, national security, and uh, you know, a lot of. You know, Obviously, uh, a huge part of our national security is what goes on with our de Department of Defense. So we want to provide every resource we can to work with them uh, to make sure our people, our mission uh, is are all being safeguarded. Thank you. Vicki, do you have any comments, reactions, uh, thoughts to leave our listeners with? No, I just want to thank you again uh, for being on with us today and to just really emphasize we can all play a role in this. And it's important because I think the threats only get more, not less. And it's going to take all of us working together in order to safeguard what we value so much, you know, in our democracy and in our communities. Yeah, well said. And what, and what would you leave with us, uh, Stephen? What, you know, what, what message would you leave the public? Um, and, and let me add uh, to go on what uh, Vicky said is that I think the public really likes and loves the FBI. You stand between us and uh, lawlessness. You, you provide public safety for us. You keep the country safe and healthy. Um, so uh, as time goes by, I think you will find there are more issues on your desk. And uh, to the extent they're public, we'd like to call, call you back and talk to you some more, actually. Um, but I think as time goes by, the FBI will become all the more recognized and all the more important and hopefully all the better funded as well. Uh, so what are your parting comments for our viewers? Well, thanks again for the opportunity and thanks for the kind words. Uh, I just want the public to know that, uh, you know, every person from top to bottom in every FBI office, but here in Hawaii as an example, is working very hard. Uh, and, uh, you know, we tend to get brought into uh, political arguments and discussions around the world. Uh, the FBI, we're not a political organization. We just put our heads down, uh, follow the facts where they lead us. Uh, and uh, we work again with our partners in the U.S. Attorney's Office uh, to prosecute cases when uh, I'll, I'll, we've been able to prove that laws have been broken. Uh, but our, I'm just so proud of our people. Uh, if the public could see what goes on in the FBI office, uh, they'd really be proud of the men and women here who, again, just put their heads down, get the work done and uh, are very proud uh, to serve the American people every day. Thank you, Stephen. Stephen Merrill, the special agent in charge of the FBI in Hawaii. And thank you, Vicki, for coming on the show uh, and talking about your cyber experience, uh, cyber experience at the conference and all the other issues. I particularly enjoyed your question about the connection between the FBI and the military. Very important question. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.